So now we're going to start talking about uh, chasing the estuaries. Now in your estuaries typically you'll find things like whiting, flathead, brim, and these are your staples. Now I remember being a young fellow running around chasing uh, flathead with hand spears and still some of the best, best memories of my life um, and the tastiest really. Uh, so with these guys, you know, you really just want to spend some time drifting the edges of the reef. Now, check your local area because in a lot of places, in, especially in New South Wales, you cannot dive in the estuaries. So make sure it's legal before you go ahead and do this. Um, but what I like to do is if it's legal in your area, find a little sand edge. So you'll probably see some mangroves on the edge of the river. And I really like to hit it you know, an hour before high tide. Uh, because what you do is you get a good hour of water moving. So you, you start at this point, the water pushes through and hopefully clearer water as well. And you won't have to do any kicking. You'll actually just drift in with the tide, get to a point and it'll be nice and dead. So you will feel no water movement and that's the peak of the tide. Um, from there, obviously I like to dive probably the last half hour after um, high tide. And you'll start being pulled back out and you can probably get out the same spot, hopefully near your car. Um, but what you'll see is in, in amongst mangroves on that little gradient of sand edge coming off the sides of the river, that's where you'll find flathead, you know, you will get brim and luderick up in the shallows and, and whiting as well. Um, what I like to do when I'm doing this is again, I like to have a nice short gun, you know, meter, 90, one of those two. Uh, for some species, you know, you've got just a standard speed spear. This can be really hard for like, you know, uh, whiting, flathead even, it's really easy for them to tear out. So having a uh, estuary setup is really nice. So what I would change on this would be a threaded spear with a pranger head. Now that what is, is pretty much uh, effectively six barbs. And once you've hit that fish, they open up and they've all got six barbs um, on the inside of them. Now that just holds onto the fish really, really easy. So um, with flathead, things like that, it's a lot easier for uh, you to land the fish. Now, a really big thing to think about is shot placement with these fish as well. So, what I like to do is, because now hopefully you've either got a pranger or you've got a speed spear. If you've got a pranger, effectively, if you hit the fish, you're going to land it. Um, but the closer you hit it to the head, the more likely you are of stoning the fish, making it much easier to retrieve. Um, with a straight spear, say for example, flathead, what I like to do is if you see the flathead laying like this, um, usually I like to sneak up from behind. So, this is its tail here. I'd sneak up from behind and I want to be shooting on this angle. What that does is it just increases the amount of, if you're coming in like this, straight down, you, it, you're only getting about this much fish to hold onto and it's quite easy to tear through. You may not even get your spear through the fish enough for the flopper to open. Whereas if you shoot on that angle, because they're going to be pinned against the sand, you hopefully should get it through just enough where your flopper is going to open. Um, yeah, there's nothing worse than losing a fish or shooting a fish and hurting a fish for no reason. Um, so taking your shot placement seriously is a really, really big thing. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. You can check out more content on our YouTube channel. Visit one of our stores and shop online at www.spearfishing.com.au.